me just talk about the people, the fraternity that you will join, what those other coaches have accomplished, and and also if you could talk about your dad and the influence that he's had on you. Well, uh, uh, I hadn't thought about that one time. I'm sure you have. And, and, uh, but I did know it was coming up because somebody said it the other day. Uh, the fraternity of coaches that I will be joining will all be elderly, <laughs> which is not the great for me, I guess, because all the old guys can win that many games because they've been around so long. Uh, yeah, it, 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 it'd be great. You know, hopefully it's it's uh, not close to the end, but but uh, 700 is a pretty big number. You know, when you start out at Oral Roberts and you're losing 18 in a row and go uh, I think six and 21 and then 10 and eight, 10 and 18 your first two years, and then somehow you know kids flipped it. But yeah, it's great, and you know there's there's uh, players deserve the lion's share of the credit and assistant coaches. Uh, on that number, but but uh, you know, so many people in, in the path of, of allowing you to to uh, be around for a long time is is uh, certainly what makes those things special to them. Probably ever bit as much to me, and, and nobody more important, obviously, than my father and and the role he's played uh, uh, in in showing my life, but but uh, uh, in in uh, in teaching me the values. I think that goes into what would probably be being a, a, a successful coach. So, so uh, you know, I, I learned more from him than anybody. Thanks for coming, everybody. That's good. Hey, Bill, any update on Jalen? Uh, not officially, but, but it's looking less and less like there is a potential to return this year. Uh, as, as I, I think I told you guys, you know, his, we, we wanted to check out his, his foot and we thought he was making really positive progress and he still is, but then he hurt his back and got those back spasms and then missed a week. And, and he's just now back to where he can probably attempt to try to go 100% and, or, or, or be close to it. But even with that, the, 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 you know, the, the limited reps and things like that, I, 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 I at this point in time, and he agrees with me, that we will not make a, 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 a final decision because you know something could happen in a game with somebody else or whatnot in the next week or so, but but it's looking less and less like like he'll uh, he'll play this year, and we should have a definite decision on it. You know, hopefully within the next you know week or so. Uh, but I, we I've told him and he told me there's no reason to make it definite right now because uh, uh, you know something could happen that could change this. But the way things are today, I don't see him playing. You talk often about your three-point shooting. Uh, where do you stand right now with how you feel about it? Uh, well, I, I, I think that we're better shooters than what we shot. You know, uh, you know, our, our starters in the league are shooting 21, 27, 29. You know, and and they're obviously over the course of the season, it's much higher than that. But but you know, in in, in a small sample size, in nine games, we haven't shot it very well. Uh, but I, I know that we're better shooters than that. I, I, Devon Dotson is a, is a really, really good college shooter. He just hadn't made shots yet. And, and, uh, and Oach is shooting like 35 for the year. He just hasn't shot. So if he's shooting 35 and 20, 29 now, that means that, that obviously he was shooting pretty well before conference play started. So we know he's capable. And, and Marcus hadn't shot many, so his numbers aren't, aren't, aren't as high. But, but uh, so, you know, small sample size, you only shoot 14, you know, you're obviously, it could be really good or it can also not look so good just because of the small sample size. But uh, I, I think it's going to be a, a situation though, we're putting too much pressure on our defense and we're putting too much pressure on our offense to try to get easy baskets if you can't stretch it. And so uh, I think it also goes to show that we probably played better than what some people may think we played offensively, just because when the ball doesn't go in the hole, it's harder to score uh, uh, in, in, in generating other offense from inside the arc. So uh, it's something that has to happen. We've got to start making shots uh, in order to give us our highest, highest ceiling, but it doesn't mean you have to make shots to win, but certainly it, it, would, it, would, it would certainly behoove us to do that. After the game the other night, you said that your team it's been a, it's been a tiring two weeks. Yeah. What does that look like to you? Uh, well, with
without dwelling on negatives, I mean, we've had a lot happen in the last two weeks. And so with that, I think comes a, a, a mental fatigue that makes physical fatigue more draining. So, you know, when, you're, when your mind's sharp and fresh and those sorts of things, usually your body will, has a better chance to follow. Uh, and and that's, that's what I mean by that. I, I didn't mean anything, you know, that it's not anything major or anything like that. And, and then you, you, you kind of couple that with these are the dog days of every season in addition to that. So you're kind of going through the dog days and you had a little bit more stuff going on emotionally than, 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 than most. And, and, and so certainly you can kind of feel run down and tired. But I, I, I think this week was good for us. You know, good thing about playing on Monday, if you get the win, you got some time to regroup a little bit. And, you know, we've had a chance to do that. The, the times that you're not shooting threes well, I mean, I mean Devon has always been able to, to drive it to the hole. Marcus downhill. And, and now Oach and Christian seem to be following suit. Can you talk about the ability for, you know, all your guards to do that? Does, does, does Doak have something to do with that? Oh, yeah, yeah. yeah. Well, Doak has a lot to do with everything. You know, the, the, the thing about it is I don't think we'll ever really know the value of Yudoka being in the game uh, uh, until he's not here and you realize that, well, they can, they can guard a ball screen differently. They, they, can, they have to, you know, Get less shots because they got to dive harder, or, or or you get in the bonus quicker, or, or or you know there's so many things, or they don't attack the lane as much. You you, uh, uh, you there's so many things that he does from a physical presence standpoint that I think uh, makes other teams game plan for it. Uh, so uh, I think I think he has a lot to do with everything that's going on. I, but I, you could also say the same about other players, their role in which they play, but. But uh, uh, I think Udoka has has as big a role as affecting the other players positively as as they could ever have affecting him positively. Uh, you know, you could say when Sfi and Devontae and Malik were here, you know, they, they stretched it so much and it made sure that he was always guarded one on one. Well, you can look pretty good if you're never, you know, trapped or you can't dive for on them or stuff like that. So so those guys really helped Doak. In, in that way, where this year we haven't we haven't shot it consistently well enough, but but I, I do think this I, I do think that we 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 are capable we're good shooters we we will and and when that happens you're going to see a, a a much more efficient group out there in large part because I think Doak will be getting more touches tight. Hey, what, what's impressed you about TCU and what they've done so far this year? Well, you know they they the Okie State got them last night, and of course that was going to happen to somebody, you know. Uh, uh, but but uh, uh, you know they, they lost a lot from last year as well. But they're 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 as much as we are playing four round one, and uh, you know Kevin I think is one of the best. You know he's one of the best post players in our league without question. He has a really bright future, and Bain uh, uh, you know is probably as good a wing scorer as we have in our league. So and and they shoot a ton of threes and and uh, and you know they make their fair share of threes too. So. I I I, uh, I like their team. I mean, they're 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 right there on the cusp with so many teams in our league that if they if they have a good second half, they're definitely in the tournament. If they don't, you know, who who knows what happens. So, it's an important game for them, and, and uh, certainly it's important for us to to keep uh, you know keep striking distance with Baylor. Thanks, Coach. Thank you. How big is this road trip? Both of them, yeah. This, this, this uh, uh, at TCU at West Virginia, you know. Of course, you could say this every week, but this isn't probably as important this week as we had uh, to set up really, really major games later. Uh, I mean, these games they all add up the same, and these games are as major as anything. But usually, the ninth inning is magnified more than the fifth inning in a baseball game, and it's kind of the same way in any league race as well. Uh, uh, we saw firsthand the fourth quarter is a little bit more magnified than the second, you know, uh, this past weekend, and, and uh, so. We, but we, but you, in order to put yourself in the best position, you need we need to play our best right now, and and uh, you know you can you, you're not looking ahead, but obviously you can look at your next two games, and the next two games will are, is pivotal, uh, uh, and and where we'll end up in the league race.
kind of a big picture question college basketball it seems like some of the road environments you guys have faced haven't necessarily been you know, maybe as juiced as, as past years is that your perception too and, and do you think that's something that's just going on with the sport uh you know i i don't know i, I think that uh i think some of the venues that we played in uh uh, hasn't had maybe juice is the right word. You play Iowa State when students aren't there. You know, you know things like that that make that environment so good, and the students aren't aren't there. Uh, uh, you know, uh, I can't speak to everybody, but I I, I would venture to bet that uh, our away away environments moving forward, uh, you won't be asking the same question. Uh, uh, you know, two weeks from now because of TCU and TCU will be full regardless. I mean, TCU will be sold out. You got, it's it's a smaller venue, but there's gonna be 7,200 or whatever there. And West Virginia will be sold out and crazy. Texas Tech will be sold out and crazy. Uh, Baylor will be sold out and be crazy. And there's one more game on there that will be sold out and be crazier, craziest. So, so, so uh, uh, yeah, I, I think they're all gonna be really good moving forward. Then, uh, just a little off topic here, but uh, like a minute before you walked in here, Andrew Wiggins got traded to the Warriors. I'm just curious if you have any thoughts on that. I, I, I heard that walking down. Of course, I, I had been rumored for a while, but yeah, I think it's great. You know, it's not going to obviously pay dividends for him uh, uh, this year as far as, you know, getting a chance to play deep in the playoffs and things like that. But you get Wiggs out there along with, uh, along with Steph and, and Clay and Draymond, to me, that looks like a pretty good quartet uh, uh, to play with. So I, I, I'm real excited for him. And he's had a really good year this year. He scored the ball and everything, but they're, you know, I think the T-Wills had lost 13 in a row. So so I'm sure that'll be, it'll be nice for probably a, a scene change, even though he told me he really liked Minneapolis. So, uh, and did Demarcus get traded as well? Anybody heard? Because I just, I flipped on the TV walking down here and it said Marcus Garrett to the Clippers. So, 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 uh, Marcus Morris. Mar I mean, Marcus Morris. <laughs> See, I love Marcus Garrett. <laughs> but, 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 did Mark, did, 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 nothing, Mar yet. did nothing. nothing yet? So, is today the last day? Yeah. So, so, so maybe that won't happen, but, but, uh, uh, but I had heard, I see, I thought I saw where Mook was, uh, was on the, on the, on the shelf too, but I guess that hadn't happened yet. Could you talk about the Big 12 halfway into it? Uh, certainly. Two potential number one seeds, number three and four could be very high seeds in the tournament. Yeah, it's 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 you know I, I really think that the 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 appearance and the appearance doesn't mean it's it's how it is, but the appearance of our league, I think, uh, in recent years was that the parity and it was so middle heavy. Like there's no difference between two and ten or whatever, or between three and ten. <clears throat> uh, this year. I think the appearance, not saying it's true, is a little bit different because of, of Baylor's success and we've had a decent run. And, and, and then West Virginia, you know, if you look at their national stats, I mean, they're like seventh in the, or eighth in the net. So that's, that's one, uh, four, and seven in all out of our league in the net. So it gives the appearance of being more top heavy, which I don't necessarily believe is true either, but it's just an appearance. Uh, uh, and there's there's so many teams in our league that that are right on the cusp. If they finish strong, they'll get in. If they if they don't, they they may not. But but uh, uh, our league is is good. But everybody's chasing Baylor. But Baylor doesn't have a one game lead on us. They've got more than a one game lead on us because they won here, you know. And, and so that basically puts you a lot of pressure on them, on on you to win there. But more importantly, you just don't want to create more separation because I, I can't see them losing. I, I, I think Baylor is as good a team that we played against since I've been in the league. Uh, 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 I really do. I don't, I don't think that we can look back and say that even Texas Tech last year, uh, uh, when we played them in, in, uh, at the time, I thought Texas Tech really got really, really special after, this, after the season was kind of over, uh, uh, you know, into postseason. And then I thought, you know, even with the great Texas teams and, and so many teams that have gone, you know, Oklahoma went to the Final Four a few years ago, you know, on January the 6th or whatever today is, I don't think that we've seen a team in our league since I've been here as good as the Baylor Bears on January, I mean, on February 6th at this particular moment. So they're not going to lose much. I mean, you, you, you've, got, you've got to, uh, 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 and I'm talking about teams that we played against. So, uh, uh, so you're not going to, you're not going to, 
they're not going to lose much. So you certainly don't want to put yourself in a situation where they're creating more separation because I, I think they're rock solid. I do.